let's unpack the chip sector further with Bernstein Semiconductor Analyst Stacey Rascon. Stacey, it's great to see you. Uh, NVIDIA doesn't report until late, kind of late-ish November, but of course 20, we have so, so many signals this week, right, um, with CapEx from some of the Meg 7. What do they need to show us to keep the NVIDIA party going? Look, they just need to show us that demand is there and strong and ideally growing, right? I mean, the, the big concern with, I mean, there's a number of concerns when anything runs this much, but I mean, the biggest concern has just been sustainability. Like the numbers have gotten so big, mm -hmm. so quickly, you, you just worry that it can't keep going. And like, as of right now, from everything we can see, it looks like it's still going. Like I, I, I get the nervousness. It clearly is not time to worry this year. I don't even think it's time to worry next year. We'll, we'll, we'll see as we go farther out. But I think at this point, they just need to show that demand is, is strong and growing and accelerating. And at least from where we're standing right now, everything we can see, things look pretty good, I think. Stacey Rasgon recently appeared on CNBC to highlight his bullish views on the AI revolution, naming NVIDIA as the top pick in the sector. It doesn't make any sense, right? <laughs> The idea that like Taiwan has stolen, quote unquote, our, our chip making abilities is, is ridiculous. Like that, that is not true. And like not allowing foreign companies to make chips on US soil, that, that is actually what we want. I mean, look, the the whole like the, the idea that we are dependent on Taiwan and that is becoming increasingly an untenable situation is, is very true. And you know, we want to get leading edge infrastructure built here in the US. And and to be honest, with lots of room to run, even with recent worries about CapEx and ROI, simply because demand remained high. Their suggestion is that they believe their process rollback over time is getting fixed. They're going to bring that volume back into the U.S. and it's going to make every, everything, you know, wonderful. I guess we'll see. You know, they 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 had a a, a day of a, a few months ago where they were sort of giving out some targets for where they thought things could go over time, and it really was like a 2030 story. Right. Even if they are on track, like it's, it's a slog between now and, and, and when we would actually see things really start to improve. And as of right now, we don't actually know if they're truly improving or, or not. So strap in for Thursday, I guess. Um, uh, it'll be entertaining, uh, if nothing else, I'm sure. He highlights that the Blackwell products, NVIDIA's next generation of offerings, will be at the center of the event. Investors are eagerly waiting to see how much better it is than the current stuff, the timeline of releases, and how NVIDIA's market can sustain growth moving forward. Well, I, I mean, there's always somebody in the wings that this is an enormous market, right? The idea that there's not going to be others trying to take a piece of that pie is ridiculous. Of, of course they are. Now, that being said, like NVIDIA has built up their position in, in silicon and hardware and software and systems and ecosystem over oh, 10 or 20 years, right? And, and they, they put those moats into place. And so anybody that is trying to get in there. And, and I'm not talking that people can't get little bits. Clearly, you know, AMD and others are getting, you know, little bits, but. He pointed to the very real and massive AI data center build as an example, predicting it would go on for a few years, helping push AI stocks higher. To be like material in that market, you've got to like, like penetrate those moats. And it's a very, very difficult thing to do. And especially for a startup, I mean, we just look at the, the, uh, the amount of, of, of money that NVIDIA has to invest in these things versus you know smaller you know very small companies. It, it's it, it's a, it's tough. It's very very tough. So I'm, yeah. at this point, I'm not terribly worried about some like young upstart coming in and, and taking a, a massive amount of, of Nvidia. So I'm not, I'm not even really that worried about larger companies, larger competitors going in and trying to yeah. take a. It doesn't seem to be impacting them very much right, right now. In the event of a delay, sales of Nvidia's older Grace Hopper chips should help to fill the gap. Rasgon added. They suggested capping the licenses um, that NVIDIA and, and other AI chip vendors can use to sell parts to other countries, particularly, I guess, in this case, the, the Middle East. Um, I'd say, it, and, and though I'm not sure it's that big of a deal, I guess we'll see, but caps, in my opinion, are not bans. Um, they already have license, they're already under licensing arrangements with the Middle East. They have to get licenses to ship there anyways. And, and frankly, the other like outright bans that we've seen in the past haven't really slowed them down at all. And I don't, so I, I'm not terribly worried about about that. They seem to be more um, incremental than anything else. Um, and, and we saw the stock yesterday was coming down before the ASML. They dropped sharply and then kind of recovered a, a little bit uh, afterwards. And so I think today it's kind of relaxing. An NVIDIA spokesperson, in response to a media report last week, had said Hopper demand is very strong, broad Blackwell sampling has started and production is on track to ramp in the second half. I use a stock market strategy in which I pick 10 stocks every month using artificial intelligence and get massive returns. 
Using this strategy I have turned $4,000 into $143,000 in the last one year. The 10 stocks I bought last month has given me 177% return and I have again bought these 10 stocks. If you want to learn the strategy which I have revealed in my 3 hour course and get access to see which 10 stocks I'm buying every month and which trades I'm taking, plus all these benefits, click the link in description and join my Patreon. Join fast because this is a limited time offer. I share stock markets latest news, datas and important information on my Telegram channel. If you want to stay updated with these things before everyone else, open the description of this video, click on my Telegram channel's link, and simply join my Telegram channel. Despite recent worries, it remains clear that demand levels continue to rise, with all major hyperscalers continuing to grow their capex outlooks, Bernstein analyst Stacey Rasgon wrote in a note on Monday. NVIDIA, which commands more than 80% of the AI chip market, stands in a unique position as both the largest enabler as well as beneficiary of surging AI development. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang had said in May its latest Blackwell series of AI chips was set to ship in the second quarter. Supply for in-demand AI chips has remained constrained as manufacturers, such as Taiwan's TSMC, opens new tabs struggled to catch up and expand capacity for complex techniques, such as advanced packaging. NVIDIA CFO Colette Cress had said in May demand for Blackwell chips could exceed supply well into next year. Even if there are minor delays, analysts at TD Cowan said they were confident these issues will likely be resolved whether through firmware or platform updates. The delays are not reflective of the demand driving data center revenue for NVIDIA in 2025, they said. Stacy Rasgon, yeah, so there's going to be a lot there. I mean, they haven't held one of these events in person in four years, and the last one they held in person, certainly AI was not nearly as exciting and mainstream as I think it is today. So there is a lot of expectations going into this. The biggest piece of, I guess, incremental information that we're all looking for is details on NVIDIA Next Generation products. The code name is Blackwell. The product is called the B100. And people are waiting to see how much better is it than the current stuff. Like, what is the timeline? People want to see like how big of an opportunity do they think overall their market can give them over the next several years. In general though, like the hype is certainly there, right? I mean, you even mentioned like the stock selling off this week. I mean, there are like, there were fears that the hype is so much, it just can't live up to it. Like people are worried about a sell the news kind of event. And I'd say with these events in the past, we've seen both. I've seen takes where it was a sell the news, and I've seen other ones where I think in 2017, the stock was up 30% coming out of this meeting, so it's kind of been all over the place. I would say long story short though, it's going to be a very exciting event. I think there's going to be lots of details on this, as well as like all the other parts of their businesses. Everybody who cares about AI in the slightest is going to be there. Stacy Rasgon, I mean look, I don't think anybody is going to walk out of this event feeling less bullish on AI and video opportunity than they felt going in, right? That's clear. I fully expect them to sound very, very positive. Look, the stock's up 70% year to date. In a recent interview with IBD, Rasgon zeroed in on semi-stocks, highlighting that they had been massively outperforming, mostly on AI. However, he cautioned investors about potential upside to these firms outside of AI, like in the PCs or smartphones business, noting that even though they might be better than last year, it was evident they would not be growing at a rapid pace anytime soon. He also added that outside of AI, data center, server CPU, and networking demand remained weak. Bernstein, the investment advisory where Rasgon practices his trade, recently revealed a basket of prominent stocks in the tech, media, and communications domain that had upside potential of almost 26% to price targets by the advisory. These stocks are also popular among hedge funds. Why are we interested in the stocks that hedge funds pile into? The reason is simple our research has shown that we can outperform the market by imitating the top stock picks of the best. Investment advisory Bernstein has an outperform rating on Nvidia Corporation stock with a price target of $130. In a recent investor note, the advisory said it was not panicking yet as media reports suggested a three-month delay to the Blackwell roadmap by Nvidia. Analysts at the advisory suggested that at a minimum, Despite recent worries over AI ROI, it remained clear that demand levels were continuing to rise and Nvidia had other products to sell in the meantime to help backfill. I use a stock market strategy in which I pick 10 stocks every month using artificial intelligence and get massive returns. Using this strategy I have turned $4,000 into $143,000 in the last one year. 
The 10 stocks I bought last month has given me 177% return and I have again bought these 10 stocks. If you want to learn the strategy which I have revealed in my 3 hour course and get access to see which 10 stocks I'm buying every month and which trades I'm taking, plus all these benefits, click the link in description and join my Patreon. Join fast because this is a limited time offer. I share stock markets latest news, datas and important information on my Telegram channel. If you want to stay updated with these things before everyone else, open the description of this video, click on my Telegram channel's link and simply join my Telegram channel. Overall Nvidia ranks first on our list of the tech stocks to monitor amid market volatility. While we acknowledge the potential of Nvidia as an investment, our conviction lies in the belief that some AI stocks hold greater promise for delivering higher returns and doing so within a shorter time frame. If you are looking for an AI stock that is more promising than Nvidia, but that trades at less than five times its earnings, check out our report about the cheapest AI stock. That's up from 43.5% two years ago and 70.1% in the fiscal second quarter of last year. For the full year, the company said it expects its gross margin to be in the mid 70% range analysts were expecting full year margin of 76.4%. Other than missing the whisper numbers, some investors may be looking at Nvidia's gross margin, which slipped a bit in the quarter to 75.1% from 78.4% from 4% in the prior period. According to media reports, I don't like, they didn't say anything, like they didn't report earnings for another month, frankly. I don't think it's more than that. But I mean, you look at the industry as a whole, you're right, things are starting to move more into a correction phase. We had reports from players like SML and TSMC. You have to remember, outside of AI, AI is very strong right now. The rest of the semi-industry this year is not all that great, right? PCS and smartphones, like they've probably hit bottom. Automotive TSMC called this out. Automotive is now starting to roll over potentially. And so I think, just broadly for the industry, especially given how strong it was last year, it was very strong year to date until recently. Stacy Rasgan, you know, it's funny. So a lot of these companies have actually been cutting numbers for a while. Like it's not so like, like I said, PCs and smartphones I think were through most of it. The question now is on like the pace of the recovery. But some of the analog like things like the industrial and the auto, like some of these companies like Texas Instruments and some of their peers have already been cutting numbers for three, four, five quarters in a row. Like, it's not like it's new. The stocks, like I said, have held up very, very well amid estimate cuts. But the semiconductor investors, in general, like to buy estimate cuts if they believe that the bottom is in. Usually the stocks go down first though. Like in many cases over the last six months, amid some fairly sizable negative revisions, the stocks just haven't gone down. They've held up very, very well dot worries over a delay in the launch of Nvidia's Open's new tab, upcoming artificial intelligence chips may be exaggerated, analysts said, as they do not expect the setback to have a big impact on the chip giant's revenue or demand.